Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Eva. Good morning. Hi, I did not hear it. Good morning. It. There you go, Shabby. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's July 3. It's Wednesday today. And Eva is awake and alive. Okay, so today, today is a feast of one of the apostles. St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Very good. St. Thomas. What is St. Thomas famous for? Doubting. Let's see. Who remembers? Doubting. <laughs> doubting. Okay. He was famous for doubting. He's called the Doubting Thomas, right? Okay, but after he... After he doubted, after he, after he started the, affirming his faith in Jesus Christ, what happened to St. Thomas? Where did he evangelize? Yeah. <clears throat> huh? okay. Where did he evangelize? Which, which part of the world did, did Thomas go to to evangelize? Anybody? Where? Nobody knows? Uh-oh. He went to India. He, Okay, he went to India. So, St. Thomas is known as the um, Apostle of India. He founded uh, many churches in India. Okay, and St. Thomas is also uh, the Apostle known to be a builder. Okay, he is said to be a builder. He built, uh, apparently, tradition says he built uh, churches in India and he built a palace for a king. For an Indian king, okay. So you would see you would see uh, Saint Thomas depicted with a builder's square. You know, a builder's square. What is a square? <coughs> it's the, the kind. It's a kind of ruler, right? Square where you make things square. <laughs> the ruler that helps you make things square. So he's depicted with that because that was his. That was what he was known for, right? So those of you who like doing, uh, who building things, there you go, Joe. <laughs> Saint Thomas can be your uh, can be one of your patron saints. Okay, so today we're going to hear. Honey, why don't you get this girl for a while? We're going to hear today about the story of the doubting Thomas. Okay, so from Saint John chapter twenty verses twenty four to twenty nine. So Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. Right. So remember when Jesus resurrected. Right. He was not with the apostles, but he came to visit. And one of the first times he came to visit them in that same room where they had the Last Supper, Thomas wasn't there for some reason. Right? So, and they told him all about it. Hey, Jesus was here. You weren't here. Now, what did Thomas say? Oh, you know, I can't believe that. Unless, what did he say? Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands. And put my finger into the nail marks. And put my hand into his side. I will not believe. Okay. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside the same cenacle. And Thomas was with them this time. Okay. Jesus came. Although the doors were locked. And stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, he singled out Thomas and said, Hey, come here, Thomas. Put your finger right here and see my hands. And bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. See, that? there's where we get that invocation that we repeat. Every time we are in front of the Blessed Sacrament, right? Every time we are there witnessing the consecration. That's the invocation that we repeat, right? My Lord and my God. We get that from St. Thomas. St. Thomas' expression of faith. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Eh? Did you just believe because now you saw me? Now you saw the proof that I am really the resurrected Jesus? Then Jesus ends by saying, Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. This last phrase is said to be a praise 
for those of us, especially, who never witnessed our Lord alive, who did not live with our Lord, who did not see the miracles and experience the miracles that our Lord performed. Okay? It is said that this last phrase that our Lord uttered here was meant to be a praise for those of us who came later, for those of us who believe, for those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ. So this, this gospel talks to us about faith. So let us try to let's try to analyze and examine what what faith is. Okay? Let me ask you, Jay, when were you born? Um, When's your birthday? April. April what? April eleven. April eleven. What year? Two thousand five. Two thousand five. April eleven, two thousand five. How do you know that, Jay? That you were born on April eleven? They told me. <laughs> Your mommy told you, right? Your mommy told you. Do you believe that, Jay? That you were actually born on April 11? Um, yeah, huh? Maybe. <laughs> maybe? Uh, is it only a maybe or do you really believe it? Do you doubt? Do, no. You don't doubt, right? You believe. You believe. Why? Why do you believe it? Were you there when you were born? <laughs> Did you understand it when you were born? Did you witness your own birth? Why do you believe you were born on April 11? Because mommy told you, right? Very good. Because mommy told you you were born on April 11 at such and such a time, okay? And such a, such a year, 2005, right? Okay, now, now that is a, a, a kind of like a demonstration of what faith is for us. Or what the virtue of faith is. Okay? It's kind of like that, although it's more than that. Because faith is not a matter only of believing something. It's not only a matter of believing a fact or, or, uh, or something that somebody tells you. Okay. Faith is, faith is what? Can we review what the Catechism says about faith? What is faith? Uh, the divine virtue by which. Um, it's not a divine virtue. Oh, it's a supernatural it's virtue. virtue. Huh? No. no. Supernatural. No, well, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, hmm. By which. It's a supernatural virtue which comes where and how? And how do we acquire it? Hmm? How do we acquire the virtue of faith? Where does it come from? Ah, ah. Looks like we need to review. We need to review our catechism here. Okay? Huh? Okay, it's a supernatural virtue that is infused by God when? When is this infused by God? Baptism. In baptism, during baptism, together with what other supernatural virtues? Faith, Faith uh, and hope and, charity. hope and charity. Okay, so the three supernatural virtues of faith, hope, and charity are infused in baptism. Okay, so it, it is a supernatural gift. It is a gift, divine in that sense, right? That it is a gift from God that is infused in our souls in baptism and through baptism. And how does, uh, it's planted in our soul. In other words, it's a gift planted in our souls during baptism. It's part of how we become part of the church and children of God and all the other effects that come with baptism. No. You stay there. Okay? So that is how we get faith. But that faith, that faith should grow. That faith should be nourished. That faith should be allowed to uh, prosper in our souls. How does that happen? 
How does that faith grow in us? What are we supposed to do? Huh? Learning. When we when we learn more about the articles of faith, when we learn more about what Jesus has revealed to us, right? Because faith involves not only believing. Uh, it's it's more than just believing, right? It is the ascent of the of the intellect. It is knowing. It is learning about God and about the things that God has revealed to us in a willful way, okay? with, with the aid of the will and, and determination to really understand and believe the things that God has revealed to us. That is what uh, faith is all about. So, and, when, and, and we believe these things that God tells us because just like Mommy tells you, okay, you were born on such and such a day. Even if you weren't there, why do you believe what Mommy and Papa tell you about your birthday? Why do you believe it? Because you trust them. Because you trust them, right? You trust that they're going to tell you the right thing, okay? You trust that they're, go they're not going to lie to you, that they're going to tell you the truth. Now, the same thing is true with God and more so with God. The basis of our faith in God is because God, God can, cannot deceive and neither can He be deceived. See? So we believe on the, the things that God tells us on the basis of God's authority who can neither deceive nor be deceived. Okay? So that is the, the, the strength of the authority of God. And besides, when Jesus was alive, okay, when he was with his apostles, he, he performed plenty of miracles to try to help uh, the apostles believe in what he was saying. Okay? And we see, we see plenty of these miracles all throughout the gospel. So, it is important for us to nurture that faith that was given to us in baptism. And this we do by our own studying by our studying of the catechism, by studying the articles of faith, by actually putting these things into practice also, right? So every time we go to Mass, as we do every day, every time we pray, okay, we can reaffirm, we can, we can say we believe in the things that Jesus has taught us and revealed to us right there at the altar. For example, we are witnessing the consecration, see? We can express our faith in the Eucharist, in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, which we were just talking about the other day. Okay? So those are moments when we can say, my Lord and my God, to really express that we believe in the miracle that's happening at the altar every day. So blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. So let us, let us live up to this trust that Jesus is putting on us, the, the blessing that Jesus put, is putting on us with this last statement. See? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So, conclusion for this, for all of us, is let us take our study of faith very seriously. See? So those 15 minutes, for example, that we study the catechism every day, let us put a lot of seriousness in that. Let us not... Let us not do that just like a, a, um, a chore to pass our time with. Okay? Let us take that very seriously because that is one way by which we can learn and understand our faith more and grow in the practice of this virtue. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Tomorrow is July 4. Hopefully, uh, we see you in the parade grounds <laughs> or, no, or in downtown. Yeah, it's July 4 tomorrow. It's Independence no. Day. Right? Already. Right? So, tomorrow, let's pray. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for the United States. Let us pray for, uh, for, for every American and for those who want to become Americans, <laughs> many of whom are knocking on our borders. And let's pray for the crisis that we are having in this country about migration pray for the president also okay and for all our officials in congress and everywhere else 
Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.